Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. Will the Treasurer outline to the House how the government is delivering essential services and infrastructure for regional Victorians, including in my electorate of Dunkley? Is the Treasurer aware of any alternative approaches? The Treasurer has the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Dunkley for his question. He knows that the budget is a plan for a stronger economy. A plan for a stronger economy, an, an economy that has, under this government, delivered over a million jobs now, a million jobs delivered around Australia. That is something that was a solemn pledge, a solemn pledge that the member for Mark McMahon didn't believe could happen, but it's one that we believe could happen, and we went to work and set about achieving it together with the businesses and Australians all around the country going out there and getting those jobs. But we know that a stronger economy is what is essential to deliver on the essential services that Australians rely on. That's the guarantee for Medicare. That's the guarantee for pharmaceutical benefit scheme. That's the guarantee for the pension. It's not guaranteed by the empty promises of the Leader of the Opposition. It's guaranteed by the strong economic management of a Turnbull government that has a plan for a stronger economy that can deliver those essential services and guarantee them that Australians rely on. So I was pleased to join the member for Dunkley at Frankston Hospital with the Minister for Health, where we could meet with Ali and Georgie, her mum, who will be, benefit, who will be benefiting from the listing of Spinraza, Spinraza who, that provides real hope for young Australians who suffer from spinal for muscular Macarthur. atrophy. But it wasn't just, it wasn't just Ali and, and Georgie who we are supporting, Mr Speaker. It is also the support that we have given for Georgie Fife Jamison. Now, Georgie Fife Jamison is on a trial for Kiskali. Now, Kiskali is a breast cancer drug, and that is being provided under the pharmaceutical benefit scheme at a cost of just over 700 million. That's what you can do, Mr. Speaker, with a stronger economy. You can guarantee the essential services that Australians rely on. But it's also about delivering the infrastructure that is necessary. As the, as the member for Dunkley knows, the electrification of the Baxter. The Baxter to Franklin line is going to be a big game changer for people who live in his electorate. It means that commuters can get to jobs. It means that patients can get to that hospital at Frankston, Mr. Speaker, on public transport, on the electrification of that line. And I want to commend the member for Dunkley for his tireless advocacy to ensuring that this critical congestion-busting infrastructure in Melbourne is being delivered by the Turnbull government. But also, we were there with the Seaford Senior Citizens Club, and we were down at John Paul College as well. And we were talking about the commitments we're making for ageing Australians, whether it's on the in-home aged care places, 20,000 and the like. But I tell you what they reminded us of when we were there, just how much they resent the Labor Party for coming after their retirement savings, Mr Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition is looking to swipe the tax refunds of hard-working Australians, Mr Speaker. He's got his hands in, his in their pockets and he'll never take them out of them.